Let's turn open our fabulous constitutions to page 12. Page 12. Which article is page 12? Say it. Don't raise your hand. Just shout it out. Three. Excellent. Oh, and how many articles in the Constitution? There are seven. Yes. Yes. Yeah, in this class, by the way, you, you don't raise, like, like Mrs. Hall's class, you don't raise hands with her, you don't raise hands with me. It takes too much time. Just shout it out. If I ask a question, just shout it out. Uh, article one is the which branch? Legislative. Legislative. Excellent. Article two is the. Okay, and we're doing article three, which is the. Judicial. Judicial. Fabulous. And we're going to read it together, okay? So, page 12. Article 3, it's the bottom paragraph on the page, section 1. We're all going to read it together. The. 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 Judicial power. Ju judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one supreme court and in such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to ta time ordain and establish. The judges, both of the supreme and inferior courts, shall hold their offices during good behavior and shall times receive for their services a compensation which shall not be diminished during their continuance in office. Excellent. Okay. Do judges have lifetime appointments? We hear that in the news, don't we? They have lifetime appointments. Do they have lifetime appointments? Go ahead, you can be wrong. Shout out an answer. No. Yes. Those who said no are correct. They do not have lifetime appointments. They have appointments for during good behavior. Um, that's something that I hear in the media all the time that's, that's not correct. Okay. Can, can a judge's salary be reduced or eliminated while that judge is serving? No, very good, very good. And probably the Founding Fathers were thinking that if a judge uh, gave an, an unpopular opinion, that that would prevent uh, vindictiveness. Um, so, uh, so that was a, a wise uh, foresight on the part of the Founding Fathers. How long do, or no, no. <clears throat> How many Supreme Court judges are there on the U.S. Supreme Court? I heard a lot of nines. Anybody else have a number? Yeah. Ten. Okay. It's, it's nine. It's nine. Okay. But you didn't see the number or hear the number nine in here, did you? No. So where does that number nine come from? Yes. I, I couldn't hear that, but, but the answer is, is that the number nine comes from Congress. Congress sets the U.S. Supreme Court at nine judges. Has it always been nine judges? No. No. Those who said no are correct. When General Washington uh, took the oath of office and became our first president, was there a Supreme Court? No. No. It was up to President Washington to nominate our first Supreme Court justices. The first one he appointed was a great, great man whose name you will see on both the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. His name was James Wilson. He was a native man from Scotland and spoke with a very heavy accent, but he was a, a legal expert and a very honorable man, and he was our first U.S. Supreme Court justice. General Washington ultimately appointed 11 justices. They, there were only six on the Supreme Court when he uh, first became president. Congress later, and I believe it was the 1820s or 1830s, Congress changed the law and made it nine. And part of the reason for that was that it was an odd number, and so there, there could not be a tie 
decision. Uh, but so for almost 200 years now, we've had we've had nine justices. Okay. Um, when when a president appoints a U.S. Supreme Court justice. What power is being executed? Is being um, executed? An executive power. That's the president. And flip your page back. Oh no! Wait a second. Um, Article two, section two, line one. Yeah. Flip your page back to page eleven, and the very bottom paragraph, which is section two. Paragraph 2, line 1, we're going to read that together, okay? It starts with he. They're talking about the president, okay? Um, <clears throat> he shall have power by and with the advice and consent of the Senate to make treaties provided two-thirds of the senators present concur. And he shall nominate, and by and with the advice and consent of the Senate, shall appoint ambassadors, other public ministers, consuls, and judges of the Supreme Court, and all officers of the United States. Stop. So, so the president makes the appointment with the advice and consent of the Senate. This is going on right now in America, is it not? Right? Uh, who, which, which justice just retired about a month ago? His name was Anthony Kennedy. And he is uh, the president, the president exercising his constitutional duty, has nominated a gentleman named Brett Kavanaugh to replace Justice Kennedy. And the Senate will exercise its constitutional role uh, and, and either advise or consent or, or, or he will not be uh, named to the court. Go back over to page 12, but actually to the top of page 13. Okay? Oh, um, <clears throat> and we talked about, in addition to the Supreme Court, other, other courts as well. That includes the U.S. District Courts, Okay, which are trial courts, okay, and that's the same thing as our federal federal district courts, okay. Um, go to go to page thirteen, the second paragraph, which starts with "in all cases." Okay, in all cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers and consuls, and those in which a state shall be a party, the Supreme Court have shall, uh, shall have original jurisdiction. In all other cases before mentioned, the Supreme Court shall have appellate jurisdiction, both as to law and fact, with such exceptions, and under such regulations as Congress shall make. Okay? Let's go back to and under such, okay, which is one line up. Got that? And under such regulations as the Congress shall make. Okay? So, so this is one of those checks and balances in the Constitution that is not really followed, uh, but can, can Congress tell the Supreme Court not to rule on a case? Take a guess, yes or no? Yes. No. Those who said yes are correct. Congress can tell uh, the Supreme Court not to rule on a case. Uh, and, and a reason for that would be that uh, it, th the case might have nothing to do with what's in the Constitution. Okay? Okay, so let's go to the, the, the paragraph right underneath that. Uh, the trial, okay, start with the trial, okay? The trial of all crimes except in cases of impeachment shall be by jury and such trial shall be held in the state where the said crimes shall have been committed. 
but when not committed within any state, the trial shall be at such place or places as the Congress may by law have directed. Okay. All right. Section three. Section three, treason. Okay. Ready? Treason against the United States shall consist only in levying war against them or in adhering to the, the enemies, giving them aid and comfort, okay? Giving, giving the enemies aid and comfort, okay? Say that, let's say that together. Giving the enemies aid and comfort. What is that called? It starts with a T? Treason, right? Okay. Uh, no, we're going to do no person now. Okay. Uh, section three, fourth line. No person shall be convicted of treason unless on the testimony of two witnesses to the same overt act or on confession in an open court. Okay. So for someone to be convicted of treason, what has to happen? They have to do what? Go ahead, say it out loud. Confess. They have to confess, right? Or they have to be um, observed by, by what? Two witnesses to the same overt act. What is an overt act? What does overt mean? Take a guess. Open in front of everybody. Okay? All right. So two people have to see somebody do something. All right. Um, next paragraph, the, starting with the Congress. The Congress shall have power to declare the punishment of treason, but no attainder of treason shall work corruption of blood or forfeiture except during the life of the person attained. Okay, what is corruption of blood? Anybody know? It's not, not an expression that we use. Uh, I've never actually heard anybody use it other than the, within the context of the Constitution. Uh, corruption of blood is, is um, let's say, let's say um, someone robs a bank and is thrown in prison and has to make restitution. Uh, is that person's children liable for the payment? No. No, not their fault. Okay? So their blood, their blood, even though their blood comes from their parents, the parents committed a crime, but the kids are not responsible. Okay? But that's something that is not the case in, in every country, but it is in our country, and it's right here in our Constitution. Um... What is an attainder of treason? Does anybody know what an attainder is? Anyone want to take a guess? That's another word we don't use very often. Um, it's it's uh, something that the legislature does that declares you guilty. Um, and, and that happens without a trial. Okay? Can Congress say that uh, Camper, Camper Pike is guilty of of killing the three campers in the neighboring camp? Can Congress do that? Yes or no? No. No. Not without a trial and a conviction. Okay? So that's what this is saying right here. All right. So, um, that's Article 3. How much time do we have? Okay. Okay. Uh, we're, gonna, we're actually going to do Article 4 and then six and seven, and then we're gonna come back and do five because I'm not exactly sure how long that's gonna take. Article five is very important, very hot right now, um, but we're gonna put as much time into it as possible. We're, we're gonna get through, uh, we're gonna go through four, six, and, and seven first, okay? So turn to page 14, article four. Article four, okay. Okay, full faith. Everybody ready? Full faith. And credit shall be given each state to the public 
Excellent. Okay. Okay. Um, section two, um, paragraph one, the citizens. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So if you have the right to free speech here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Do you have the right to free speech if you go up to the, the state of Vermont? Yes, you do. Yep. Thank you. Um, okay. A per, we're going to do a person charged now. A person charged in any state... Okay, good. So, if um, if a man commits a murder here and invades Camp Constitution and kills one of you, God forbid, and then flees to Vermont without, uh, you know, he escapes, okay, without being caught by the police, and we know where he is in Vermont. He's, he's hiding out right by the, the Bennington Monument. Okay? He's, he's hiding out in, in Bennington. The, the governor of Massachusetts or the police authority can petition the governor of the state of Vermont and say, we need this guy back here in Massachusetts. What is the governor of Vermont's responsibility at that point? What'd you say? Send them back. Send them back. Can the governor say no? No, no. I mean, not really. I mean, he could, but then he'd be guilty of uh, offense himself. Okay. So the founding fathers were, were really, they were trying to set it up so that each state had its own auto autonomy, right? But so that Criminals couldn't manipulate that, right? Okay. All right. Uh, section three, paragraph one. New states. Okay. All right. New states may be. Okay, so uh, I think we have a camper from New York here, don't we? Do we have a couple of campers from New York? Yeah, I thought we had some. Um, Staten Island is, is part of what state? New York. And uh, there are some people on Staten Island that have wanted to be uh, part of New Jersey because geographically, Staten Island is much closer to New Jersey than it is to New York. If you ever look on a map, I mean, it looks like it's, right, it's part of New Jersey, but it's not. It's part of New York. And, uh, but can the, can the people of Staten Island vote and say we're going to be part of New Jersey? Can they do that? N n no. Well, they can. They can, but that doesn't mean they'd be part of New Jersey, okay? What, what we just read here in, in uh, Article 4, Section 3, basically says that the legislature of the state of New York would have to approve of this, right? And the legislature of the state of New Jersey would have to approve of this, right? And if those three factors all happened, could, could Staten Island change states? Would you say? Yes, it could. It could. But has that happened in our history? 
No. In fact, I, uh, I know there was a, either an attempt uh, or maybe very briefly a, a, a state called Franklin. Um, but, but our states have come into the Union and they've stayed in the Union. They've stayed the state that they are. Uh, because it's very difficult because of Article 4, Section 3, to change anything like that. There's also talk right now about a state out west dividing into three pieces. Has anybody heard about that? Yes. California, California that's right. So, um, but I think the chances of that are very, very slim. Okay. Um, And, okay, so let's go to um, the next paragraph, which starts out with the Congress, okay? Everyone ready? The Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all legal rules and regulations to the territory the property belonging to the United States. And nothing in this Constitution shall be destroyed. Good. Okay. Section 4, the United States. The United States shall guarantee... So, uh, Article 4, Section 4, which is kind of easy to remember, isn't it? 4-4. Four, four. This, this is a, a um, uh, very relevant uh, clause to us today uh, because it says that the, the uh, United States shall protect each of them, meaning of the states, each of the states against invasion, right? What's going on today in the United States? Yes. Say it louder. Right. Yeah. People are coming in. People are coming into our, our country illegally. Yeah. And uh, but the federal government's responsibility is to protect the protect this country from being invaded. Okay. Um, and it also guarantees to every state in this union what kind of government? A Republican form of government, right? And that means, of course, that uh, the Republicans will run the government, right? No. No. What, what does Republican mean in this, in this context? It means of or pertaining to a republic, okay? And what is a republic? What is a republic versus a democracy? Why doesn't it say the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union uh, a, a democratic form of government? Why does yes? That's part of it. That is definitely part of it. We get to pick who represents us, and they, the only thing that you left out that's important is that they make the laws. And we follow and obey the laws. That's, that's what a Republican form of government means. Um, in fact, okay, yeah, okay. So now we're going we're gonna, to um, we're gonna skip Article 5 for the moment, okay? We're going to go right down to the bottom of the page, Article 6, okay? All right. Everybody there? Okay. We're going to start with all debts. Okay. All debts contracted and engagements entered into before the adoption of this Constitution shall be as valid against the United States under this Constitution as under the Confederation. Okay. So, so what the Founding Fathers are saying here is just because we're forming a new type of government does not mean that the debts that we owe, we will not pay. Those debts will be paid. That's what they were saying right here. Okay. Next, con next uh, paragraph is this Constitution. 
Okay. Ready? This Constitution. Excellent, excellent. And we, we just uh, we just went through that. Remember, about an hour ago, Mrs. Hall quoted this uh, this clause when she was uh, on the on the Dave Kopak show. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to the senators now. The senators, the senators and representatives. Stop. Good. So, uh, th 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 those serving in public office are bound, thank you, are bound by oath or affirmation. What is an oath? A promise? Yeah. Yep. It is, um, it is literally a statement in public before God and men. Okay? All right. So they have to take that oath to, to be sworn in uh, and serve in their role. Okay. And, and, and they swear to support this Constitution. Okay. And now we're going to finish that last clause. starts with but no. Okay. Okay. But no. Okay, okay, so no religious test. And, and the reason the Founding Fathers put that in is because they didn't want uh, Baptist public servants telling the citizens that they had to be baptized a certain way or Episcopal, uh, Episcopals to set up you know, an Episcopalian government uh, they, they wanted everyone to be able to worship the way they wanted to worship uh, and not be required by the government. Okay. Um, let's see. The last paragraph of... Uh, we, we got that. Okay, so we're going to move on to Article 7 now. Okay, so let's do a little review just for a moment. Article 1 is, is what branch? It's the... Legislative branch. Article two is about. Executive. Article three is about judicial. the judicial, right? Article four is that's a little harder to explain. It's about the admission of new states, right? Uh, and about protecting our borders, right? Yeah. So article four is admission of new states, uh, protecting protecting our country from invasion. Uh, article five, we're we skipped. We're going to come back to that. Um, Article 6, no, no religious test, and also that we would honor our debts. Okay, and now we're moving into Article 7. Uh, let's read that together, starting with the ratification. The ratification of the conventions of, the ni of nine states shall be sufficient for the establishment of this Constitution between the states so ratifying the same. Very important words. There's no word in this document that's not important. Okay? So the founding fathers were saying there, there, were 13, there were 13 states at the time. But the founding fathers did not say, okay, if nine of you ratify this form of government, all 13 of you have to live under it. Did they say that? No. They said if nine of you ratify it, nine of you will live underneath it. Right? Or live by it. Okay? This is a big contrast with the United Nations. 
Okay, the United Nations created a, uh, well, I'll use the word, it, it doesn't mean the same thing to us as it, as it does to them, but they created a court, okay, called the International Criminal Court. Say International Criminal Court. Okay, but in this court, they don't have the same values that we have. Do you remember when Mrs. White was going through the Bill of Rights and uh, she, thank you, she, she said, um, she, she showed you um, right number six, amendment number six, where you have the right to confront your accuser, you have the right to be presented with the evidence against you, you have the right to legal counsel for your defense. Remember those in the, the Bill of Rights, amendment number six? Okay. Uh, are those rights... Uh, recognized by the International Criminal Court? No. Uh, and furthermore, the International Criminal Court takes a tremendous leap of um, authority by claiming that back in 2002, I believe it was, the, the ICC said, well, if, you know, there are almost 200 countries in the world, right? Um, almost 200, or almost 200 UN members. And the UN said, well, if 60 countries ratify the UN International Criminal Court, we then have jurisdiction over everybody on Earth. Okay? Is that the same mentality as, as our founding fathers? No, it's not. It's not. Okay, done in convention. Let's let's uh, say this one together. Done in convention. Convention by the unanimous consent of the states present, the seventeenth day of September, in the year of our Lord one thousand seven hundred and eighty-seven, and in the independence of the United States of America, the twelfth. In witness whereof we have hereunto subscribed our names. Excellent, excellent, thank you. See, they didn't know that this Constitution would be ratified. They hoped, but they did not know. Um, and let's go back to Article 5 now, okay? Um, yeah, Article 5. We're going to go... The, you know, the Founding Fathers spoke in a different way than we do today. You know, you... you know. Most, if not all, of you text. You'll send uh, LOL, right? Okay, or, you know, BFF, right? Best friend forever, right? Or I'm, I'm sure th these are probably old now, too. But, but uh, the Founding Fathers spoke in a flowery way, okay? Uh, compared to the way we speak today, okay? So... So when we read this together, try not to be intimidated, okay? Because we're going to go back through it. But we're going we're gonna to do the first, like, 10 or 12 lines, okay? Um, and it starts with the Congress, Article 5 on page 15, right? Okay? The Congress, whenever two-thirds of both houses shall deem it necessary shall propose amendments to this Constitution or on the application of the legislatures of two-thirds of the several states shall call a convention for proposing amendments, which in either case shall be as valid to all intents and purposes as part of this Constitution when ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states, or by conventions in three-fourths thereof, as the one or the other mode of ratification may be proposed by Congress. Stop. Great. Okay. So the Founding Fathers, when they wrote this in 1787, and it took them all summer to do this, from like May, mid-May to mid-September, for about four months, they knew that there would be something in here 
that would need to be changed or modified um, or maybe added. And that's why they put this Article 5 section into uh, the Constitution. And the whole thing that we read there is, I, I believe I counted one time, it's like 93 words. Okay, or no, 100, 113 words. But there's a lot in here, okay? So, <clears throat> two-thirds of both houses will, will, will deem it necessary that there needs to be a change. What does that mean exactly? Who wants to take that? Two-thirds of both houses making a change. It means that both the House and the Senate need to say, we need to amend the Constitution, and, and two-thirds of both of them need to say that. Okay? So that's kind of hard to get to right there. Okay? And they can propose an amendment. Okay? But there's another way that, that changes can be made, and that's on the application of three-fourths of the several states. Okay? Two excuse me, two-thirds of the several states. Uh, the three-fourths is going to come later in this process. So, so today we have how many states? 50. And three-fourths would be what? How many? Excuse me, two-thirds. Two-thirds. Two-thirds is how many? It's about 34, right? So if 34 state legislatures say that there's something wrong with the Constitution or something that needs to be added, they can have their state legislatures pass these uh, petitions, okay? Do the petitions have to pass by two-thirds in that state to be a live call for a change on the convention? What's the answer? No. No. No, they only need to pass by one vote. So like in my state of New Hampshire, where we have 400 members of the House, 24 in the Senate, it can be 13 to 11 in the Senate, and it can be 201 to 199 in the House. That passes, okay? But that's got to happen in 34 states, okay? All right. Th um, <clears throat> All right, so so for, um, yes, oh, okay, got it, got it, okay. Well, um, let's go back down to the, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, the eighth line, this is when ratified, okay? It's right smack in the middle. When ratified by the legislatures. Let's go through that together. Again. Are you there? When ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states or by conventions in three-fourths thereof, as the one or the other mode of ratification may be proposed by the Congress. So who decides what method these, these amendments are going to be ratified? It's that last word there. Congress decides, okay? And Mr. Shirtliff and others here and I have gone to the state legislatures, and over and over we hear people giving testimony that, that oh no, the state legislature decides. You decide. But is that true? No. Who decides? Congress decides. And if Congress wants to have state conventions, they can do that. Um, and if they want to let the state legislatures uh, deal with it, they can do that too. Okay. All right. Mr. Shirtliff, did you want to add anything? Okay. Okay. So let's go back through the Constitution one more time. The, the Article 1 is the legislative, legislative branch. branch. Article 2 is the executive, executive branch. branch. Article 3 is the... Okay, I know Article 4 is a little harder, but it is the admission of, and it also says the federal government should protect, the protect us, literally protect our 
states against invasion. Okay, Article 5 is what? Uh, you can say it however you want. I mean, everyone's going to come up with a different answer. Basically, hey, if we got things wrong, this is how to change it, right? That's Article 5. Article 6 is we will pay pay debts incurred under the previous government. And Article 7 is rat ratification. Okay. All right. And then, of course, you got the preamble, which we all know, thanks to Mr. Moore. Okay. And then we, we know that the last section of the Constitution is the Bill of Rights, uh, Amendments 1 through 10, and then there are another 17 amendments there, there, thereafter. So thank you very, very much. Do we have time for questions, Mr. Shirtliff, or are we done? Thank you very much, campers. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.